Uh, Professor Rai and uh, Professor uh, Lavinia, historically, so we're treating this as baseline uh, for, for now. I all, kahit pa matagal na natin minamat sa ganyan mga surveys, uh, that was the, those were the numbers heading into the new year. But historically, how much in those numbers actually move? I mean, and by how much do they still move between January and May? Well, uh, based on our tugon ng masa uh, survey, no, which we conducted last December 7 to 12, uh, you'll notice uh, I, I gave you uh, some of the um, uh, slides already. A, 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 a small percentage of Filipino voters are still willing to change their vote. Um, and something like 20, almost 30 percent of uh, 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 those who responded to our survey said that they're still uh, open to uh, changing their vote. We also gave a slide there that shows the commitment to voting for certain candidates. No? And uh, you'll notice that uh, uh, significant, the lead, you know, the one thing that's, that has come out of our survey, which is the latest survey for the country, we're awaiting the SWS uh, survey, which uh, apparently is coming out very soon also. Um, there is a definite front runner for president. That's uh, former Senator Bongbong bon Marcos with 54%. Uh, as far as our survey is concerned, and uh, a definite front runner for vice president at 50%. And uh, when you look at uh, Senator Marcos's vote, something like 14 to 15% are soft. Uh, even with that number, uh, if you take it out of his total, that's still a significant number and uh, will be a, a challenge for all the candidates who are um, the nearest candidates, 40% down. Uh, uh, VP Lenny Robredo has yeah, 14 percent, and uh, Santa Marcos has 54 uh, percent. The uh, vice presidential uh, race is a little closer. Uh, you have uh, Inday Sara Duterte with 50 percent of the vote, and 33 percent for uh, uh, Senate President T uh, Tito Soto. Either way, the, 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 the impression we all have is that uh, there is some. There's a great consensus around. Not just uh, Senator Marcos, but also the tandem, uh, and and the tandem is uh, has the vote, both the, the candidates for president and vice president are obviously helping each other here. No, their bailiwicks are, are are adding to each other, and and we're seeing that great consensus uh, very early on, uh, you know, before the elections. Now, I agree with uh, with uh, Prof Tayao. You know, the one thing, uh, one one. Uh, um, Trend no, in Philippine elections is that nobody has gotten over 50% uh, of the vote. No? Um, and the closest was, in fact, uh, uh, President Erap and the former President uh, Binigno Aquino. But that might be broken. No? And uh, one, one, one other uh, uh, important insight also, no? or uh, a note, is that only one tandem has actually won. No? That's uh, GMA during her time and Noli De Castro. Yeah. But yeah. from the look of it now no uh we're seeing we might see all of those uh records broken no uh and so um but then it's still far away i agree with everyone here uh, it's still too early to uh call in no and say that this is done so much will change when the formal campaigning starts but in the okay what will change particularly i i, I just want to know uh when you say that the numbers now could still change uh, my first question is, what can change them, uh, you know, heading into campaign period? Mm -hmm. And how much change yeah, can how much, probably huh? be realized by, say, the, the second and the third and the fourth candidates coming out now in the surveys? Well, I have a slide well, there. Sure. We, yeah, yeah, go we, we have a slide there that you can uh, we can quickly flash and to answer your questions because because it's quite technical, you know. Uh, so uh, no, there's another slide on uh, stable two, uh, which uh, shows the likelihood of changing for president, and and you'll you'll notice that uh, all candidates, uh, yeah, all candidates have a so-called soft votes. No, I will definitely change. I will likely change. Even if you add the 50 50, uh, you'll, you'll notice that, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, candidate Marcos is a very strong uh, base of support, no? and much of which 
close to yeah uh, a significant more than more majority of which are, are likely to stay with him no and uh, this is very different from the vote of uh, uh, VP Lenny no who's the closest competitor and you'll know you'll notice her vote 50 uh, 50 I may or may not change is 37 percent no very big no and if you add all those numbers together it's a significant uh, a vote that's uh, uncertain also for her and uh, when you look at the other slides that we have, you'll notice that the number one preference, no, uh, second preference, is uh, Isco Moreno. So given that dynamic, uh, uh, we don't know how will this will turn out. We have a strong front runner with a very solid base of support. Um, uh, only 15, 14% of his vote is likely to really change, so-called soft votes. And uh, we have uh, a second preference, no? a, a, a favored no? a preference in uh, uh, Isco Moreno. So if there's, there are candidates that are going to fall out in the midst of the race, uh, it will be uh, Mayor Isco who will be a, a significant beneficiary of this uh, possible uh, shift in votes. So, so this is what the data is showing. Um, of course, the dynamics will be very different uh, in reality. So... Uh, to answer your question, Luchi, that's how it looks. No? Uh, each of each candidate has soft votes, but uh, our front runner has a very strong base of support, uh, and a significant number of his vote is committed already. So something like almost seventy percent. No, and so uh, that's the story at the moment. Of course, these numbers are not; these trends are not permanent. They will change, and uh, I'm sure a lot of us are hoping that it will change. No, and. Uh, We'll see, no, come January when the formal uh, electoral process starts.